Hello everyone again. The time is 7.05 p.m. Eastern, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us. This session is to discuss the online and part-time graduate programs in space systems engineering offered through the Whiting School of Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School of Engineering. To give us more information on space systems engineering, I have with me our chair, Dr. Patrick Binning. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, and what a great picture to start with. Uh, in about, I think, seven to nine hours, that spacecraft shown there, Parker Solar Probe, will be doing a Venus gravity assist on its way to the sun, a successful launch we did in August. For NASA. And so let me talk to you about uh, space systems engineering, about our program, what we uh, specialize in, and what we offer. Let's go to the next chart. So, what are the five things if you wanted to hang up after this? What are the five things you want to know about the program? We offer a Master of Science in Space Systems Engineering. Some courses in the Whiting School and in the Engineering for Professionals program offer certificates, we do not yet. 10 total courses to get your master's degree, and they must be completed in five years, but they can be completed in well under five years. Many of our graduates uh, complete their degree in uh, three years or less. We have two focus areas. I'll go into detail about these in coming up slides. One focus area being technical systems and subsystems, and then one focus area being leadership and management for your electives. You do not need to pick one focus area and you're not forced into either one. They just help bucket the electives depending on your interest area in the degree. We offer both online and virtual live courses. The virtual live courses, if you register for those, have both a physical presence in Laurel, Maryland on the campus of the Applied Physics Lab. And then if you're in virtual live, you can then log on or watch the recordings. And the online is an asynchronous model. And so the two words are, are not synonymous and the vocabulary is virtual live occurs at a particular date at a particular time and you either watch it in person or log in and watch a lecture that occurred most recently in the past and the online variant of courses is asynchronous. The module opens, there may be five 10 minute video lectures for you to watch, followed by a discussion board and that type of thing. So depending on your interest and in, in learning area, you have options there. We do require a weekend residency in Laurel, Maryland, within one time, within the 10, year, 10 courses you take. In that weekend residency, you arrive on a Friday, you meet your laboratory partners in the program, you have spent some time already in a course building up to this laboratory experimentation, you spend all day Saturday in Laurel on campus working with a small spacecraft, I'll talk more about that coming up. And then finally, this is a dynamic industry, this is an exciting career field, this program is in great demand and we have a large number of students on an annual basis coming to apply for this program. We are continually adding new courses and we have five new courses expected to be available in fall of 2019. So anybody on the phone who is not already in uh, a course this semester, when you register and come online, you'll have five new electives to choose from next fall and expect that trend to continue over time. So there's the top five things to know about the Space Systems Engineering Program. Our faculty that Cheryl mentioned are, are drawn from practitioners and subject matter experts. And in this discipline, in this program, Space Systems Engineering, we are all practicing engineers doing spacecraft hardware development from writing ground software, writing flight software, integration and test and power systems. And I'll talk about that. Shown here are just a snapshot of some of our, our faculty. Uh, in the photographs are two spacecraft that many of the faculty who you will be instructed by worked on. The large one in the center bottom is the messenger spacecraft. 
that visited Mercury very recently. And on the right, on the bottom, is the New Horizon spacecraft, which you might have heard three years ago, flew past Pluto. And you will hear great things about in uh, December and January as it flies by the most distant object visited ever in our solar system, Ultima Thule. The point is, this course is built and designed and taught by people who are experienced in building and delivering spacecraft. Our degree, I mentioned it already, is a Master of Science. 10 courses, five years. It's set up that we have five core courses that every degree earner must take. I'll talk about those in a future slide. And five elective courses that we recommend and offer to pick a route of discipline and interest area that you have. You'll see when we talk about the electives that we recommend, we actually go farther in terms of your interests. We have hundreds of courses available in the Engineering for Professionals program and in the part-time program that you might think are applicable to your interest in your own space systems pursuit that you could find in the catalog and request your advisor to take. We make a, a couple of dozen recommendations, but we have a lot more for you to choose from should there be a specific area maybe in software or in electro optical systems or mechanical systems that you want to pursue. The five core courses are shown here and all students that take the degree take these core courses. Typically the students take the first three listed here as their first three courses. Typically they take five electives after those three, and then typically they finish with the final two core courses that you see there. First course being systems engineering for space systems. We take you through the requirements process, functional breakdown, all the way through the development part of it and disposal of spacecraft. So the end-to-end -end systems view of developing space systems. Fundamentals of Engineering Space Systems 1 and 2 are a two-semester series of a course that takes you through all of the specific disciplines in the technical side, and I have an upcoming chart on the details for that, which I'll wait on. The fourth, fourth course you see here, I also have, uh, actually have a chart on both of the next two coming up, where Applications of Space Systems Engineering is a case study based on topics of interest going on that particular semester and year. And then the small satellite development and experimentation is the residency weekend, which I'll talk about in a future slide. So these are the five core courses that you take to get your degree. I mentioned the fundamentals of entering space systems one and the fundamentals of space systems uh, two. These are the topics instructed in each week, instructed by a guest lecturer who does this for a living, and it is their core discipline that they've spent, they either have a master's degree in mechanical and thermal or power, or even a PhD in this area, and, and they are world experts that do this for spacecraft that we build at APL. Additionally, not only are these the specific topics that you can see there, this course is packaged together with weekly homeworks to make sure that the students understand the topic that is being presented, but also it is designed as a two-sequence project that you will be teamed up with. So in FES 1, teams of three or four students are brought together. They go through the development of a, of a project that we assign that has got a rigorous uh, development instruction manual set up to go through the design of a project and of a concept. That team completes and does a midterm in FES 1. They then move into FES 2, take that midterm project with them, work through FES 2, and at the end of FES 2, present it. Not only is it a project base, but at the end of FES 1, there's a midterm presentation where you are asked to present your project to a panel of skilled engineers to evaluate and give you feedback on on the technical aspects of what you did and at the conclusion another uh, presentation is given by the team to a panel of engineers 
to get feedback. This is a learning environment. It's not defending your PhD dissertation. We want this to be an educational activity. We want this to be a learning activity. But we also want the students to realize that engineering is not sitting in the corner doing engineering. There is a defense of your work. There's an audit of your work. It's important that we do that. We're humans. We make mistakes. And that part of being an engineer is presenting and defending and doing the rationale of what you do. And this course kind of sets you up for that kind of interchange with a panel of experts to um, help you get through that. The fourth course in the core series is the applications of space systems engineering. This is one that I actually co-instruct. And it is somewhat similar to the FEST topic that we mentioned where there are weekly homeworks. But this is a case study based uh, instructional module. We bring in world expert guest lectures in robotic servicing and missile tracking and space system situational awareness in new space opportunities and space weather. And we, in some cases, assign individual assignments. In three cases, we make small group groups do a couple of week analysis of certain things. And there are two large case studies that students go through. You can see uh, case study one is there in the lower left, the NASA TIMCO review process. TIMCO is the technical management and cost overview. NASA does competitive proposals. We take students through that competitive proposal review process to know and feel what it is like to be a reviewer of NASA proposals like that for discovery, like for New Frontier, so that you are experienced in that sort of competitive proposal process and review process. So this is the Applications of Space Systems Engineering uh, program course. These are the two sets of focus area that are electives that the students may choose five from. They're bucketed in two focus areas that I mentioned the students are not required to elect a focus area, the students are not required to stay in a focus area, and in fact, these electives are not the only electives that students are authorized to add to their elective bucket. If you opened up the Engineering for Professionals catalog and you looked at the software uh, systems courses that are offered, the mechanical engineering courses that are offered, you can add those through an advisor approval if that was an area you wanted to go work in. But you can see we offer control systems, navigation systems, a lot of software capabilities, uh, physics and optics, remote sensing for people who are interested in the remote sensing subsystem design on the technical side of the house. On the leadership and management side, these are for students that are moving along in their careers that are getting into project management, getting into program management, getting into executive management of large, difficult aerospace projects. And so we walk through assurance of aerospace programs, management of complex systems, modeling and simulation systems, architecting, design, test, and things of that nature. So those are, those are the uh, high level electives that uh, are offered. And there will be five new ones added to this. Uh, we're looking to add uh, electro-optical for space systems, antenna design for space systems, spacecraft integration and test, flight software, and guidance and navigation and control for space. So those five technical electives will be uh, on this talk one year from now. Uh, wrapping up a little bit, our, the uh, penultimate course, the ultimate course actually is the uh, small satellite development and, and experimentation course. We think it's important in this course to give students hands-on hardware experience. Uh, there's a, a saying in space systems, it's the humility of working with hardware. You don't quite get that humility because we don't give you a broken small satellite to work with. We give you a working small satellite. You can see a picture of it there in the upper right. It's a CubeSat, it's about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, but it contains all of the subsystems needed to make the spacecraft work. It's got a reaction wheel, it has solar cells, uh, command and data handling unit, electrical unit, power distribution, a battery that needs to be charged, sun sensors and things of that nature. 
And the course is, is designed over the first 10 weeks, you are building up your test cases. You are building up your scripts. You are thinking about what it is you want to test and what it is you want to learn so that when you come in for the residency weekend with your teammates, you already have a significant amount of prep, prep, uh, prepared material that you are able to jump in and get ready with a hands-on um, interface with this small satellite. This is a very favorably viewed course, and it does require an in-residency in Laurel, Maryland. Uh, finally, this is just another photograph. You see uh, one of our instructors standing there and a couple of our students sitting down, uh, illuminating some of the solar cells and sun sensors with the computer reading out. Can it tell what attitude it is? Can it tell what direction the sun is? Has a reaction wheel. You can see it's hanging there, so it's got one degree of freedom in this picture. We have updated, actually uh, improved models of this CubeSat. This is an older photograph. The new versions are on an air bearing table. They actually have two degrees of uh, motion, not just uh, the, the one degree you see here in rotation. So it's a very hands-on, working with hardware, taking the boards down, inspecting them, putting them back together, sending commands, writing scripts, uh, working with the battery system, working with the power system you can see there as an example. Cheryl, uh, back to you. All right, thank you, Dr. Benning. Uh, we'd like to take you through our application process. Uh, if you are interested in applying for this program, uh, these three things right here are what you need to submit for your application. The first thing you need to submit is your online application, and you can do that by visiting ep.jhu.edu backslash apply. Uh, in addition to your online application, you'll need to submit your academic transcripts. That's transcripts for uh, all of your undergraduate institutions. If you've transferred uh, during the process of earning your bachelor's, we'll need uh, both kind of your resulting bachelor's and any, any credit that you've transferred in. Uh, tra transcripts from those particular institutions. Uh, we'll also want to see a copy of your professional resume. Instructions on where you can send these additional materials, these transcripts, this resume can be found actually on the application website. Uh, all the instructions are found above the form in the text above the form. Dr. Bidding, would you like to talk a little bit about the admissions requirements for your program? Absolutely. So our admission requirements are a bachelor's degree in a technical discipline and that's pretty open at this stage but uh, this isn't a pro this is a program to educate students that plan to be in the designing building and developing of spacecraft and so we look to ensure that there's a technically rigorous undergraduate degree we find students who don't have uh, a deep calculus or physics background to have some challenges, but we also work uh, through certain backgrounds in that domain and can give credit for educational background. We have a, a GPA requirement of 3.0, and then this is a program for engineering professionals, and some level of work experience is definitely helpful coming into the program as a, as a new graduate student. All right, great. And you see here that we've crossed out the, the GRE. We do not require students to submit their GRE scores uh, for admissions into our online and part-time programs. So that is one thing that you do not have to worry about. Uh, application timeline. Uh, just to let you know, it typically takes our admissions department and our academic departments four to six weeks to review your completed application. Uh, we offer rolling admissions here for our online and part-time students, so we don't have hard application deadlines. Uh, but, you know, just keep in mind that four to six week time period, here are some important dates associated with the upcoming semester. Spring registration will actually open on October the 25th, and our spring semester begins on January the 28th of 2019. So if you are interested in studying with us in the spring semester, we encourage you to submit your application materials as soon as possible so that we can get that review process started uh, so that you can register as soon as possible for these classes.